Ledge clicked on this. Uh, I'm not sure if you were expecting like high quality, and I'm certainly not trying to imitate Landis or Walker or any of those guys when it comes to this, especially not Blompier. But this is something that, lo and behold, came to me and I realized a long time ago they dropped the ball. They admit they dropped the ball, but still. I just might be the guy that can make a good ET game. Now hear me out. Hear me out. I actually did research. I went back. I I took I took notes. I took notes, people. This is pretty much how it would go. Start off pixelated, maybe 16-bit sky. It's beautiful. I mean, it's pretty. It worked in Mario, worked in Sonic. It's possible to do. Just show the stars. Do the cliche, one, maybe two shooting stars. But one of those stars ends up being this ship. Lands in a field. A little bit of crunchy, crunchy going on. As you see figures scurrying about. Observing things. Oh, this glowy bug fire thing is going through the air. Oh, look. They grow from the ground. They go vertical. All right. Hey, what's this? Hmm. Funny, that mushroom-like thing I ate just made my fingers turn all sorts of colors. But now you're focused on one particular individual. And that's when realize it's E.T. It's digitized E.T. It's a cute E.T. He's still that lovable little bastard we all love. Redundant, much redundant. And this is where the actual mechanics of the game start up. Not in a hand-holding sort of way, but clearly step A, step B, step C. You learn how he moves about. You click this, he walks over there. Oh. You click that, he walks over here. Oh. You're starting to realize it's a point and click game, which is fine. It'd be very Maniac Mansion. I just dated the hell out of myself with that, didn't I? But it would be an easy way to get even casual gamers to play. You're not having to learn all these advanced combos. You don't have to worry about looking through a menu over and over and over again. I don't even think we need to worry about inventory so much. Because right now, you're E.T. And you just keep going farther farther into the forest and it gets darker and darker you're starting to get a little worried you're starting to wonder if you can find your way back you're, you're looking around these these trees that were once nice and majestic and welcoming they like you know your own mother's arms when you're six and you're cold you know now they're they're spindly. They're, they're, they're almost like gnarled fingers from an old witch reaching out. You're getting this Hansel and Gretel vibe. But off in the distance, you see something. It's a flicker of light. It looks hopeful. It looks welcoming. It, it almost looks familiar. And there's another one, another one, another one. They gradually begin to come up, and you hear this crunch and thump and stumble and bumble. And you're hearing voices, and clearly they are not the kind of voices you want to hear. You, these are unfamiliar to you. These are, they, 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 these might be bad things coming your way. And if that's the case, you better run. And any gamer that knows, if you've been in a dark area and suddenly there's a flash of light, you do not want to go near that light. So he starts to run. This is where you learn that E.T. might be able to pull off some type of stealth mode. 
but you know he he's not built like Nathan Drake or or even Mario for that matter. He probably doesn't even have knees. He runs more like Cotton Hill from King of the Hill. He's just wobbling with his arms flailing about, trying to get as far away from these things as possible because they're coming up quick. They're coming up fast. And all you keep hearing is, get him. Get him. Get him. Why get him? We, we just came down to pick up some flowers. We're trying to observe the world here. We are a peaceful race of entities. We know Yoda, goddammit! And all you know is... A little clock's starting to pop up on your screen. And it's counting down. It's not really fast, certainly not slow, but it's there to let you know there's something going on. And as you try to stay ahead of what you're noticing are flashlights, as you're trying to stay out of grasp of these large, lumbering creatures. I mean, clearly it'll be revealed that they're men. Probably of the FBI, probably of NASA. Maybe they're men in black. Who knows? The fact of the matter is, these guys have a very aggressive intent on getting a hold of you. You can't have that. Because you don't know what they're going to do. I mean, who knows? Maybe they're a bunch of big, cuddly teddy bears. Oh, wow, you're running around all cold. Let's warm you up. Or maybe they want your head on their wall. You can't risk this. So you're running. You're using small bits of stealth. You're ducking behind trees. You're hiding under a bush. You're staying as quiet as you can. But you notice something in the distance. That isn't a flashlight. That is welcoming. That is home. And it's going away. Fast. Your ship is leaving without you. Th this, this isn't good for you. You're, you're trapped on a foreign planet with much larger, aggressive, loud creatures and and you're all alone. I mean, it'd be fine if you had a comrade or two. You don't. Your mom is not there. Your dad isn't there. You have no brothers or sisters. You're a child trapped in a strange world. I mean, it's almost like freshman year of high school. And you've only got yourself. That's when the screen pops up. Cue the digitized music. E.T. the extraterrestrial. And it's there. In all its glory. Cut to black. Slowly fade in. Coming down in this humble little house. It's still night. You're hearing chirps and crickets and howls, digitized owls. Cut to inside the house. Hey, Elliot, you gonna go get that pizza or not? Suddenly you're in the feet of Elliot, the shoes of Elliot. As he's playfully getting bullied by his older brother and their friends. Because it's Elliot's job to go get the pizza, otherwise, if he doesn't pay, he doesn't play. And now you're roaming around the house. Most of it's blocked off. It's mostly just the kitchen, the porch, the back patio, and the yard. But that's all that matters. That's all that really matters at that point. Because you're learning Elliot's move mechanics. He he can pick stuff up, he can observe things. You know, maybe, maybe you point and click and stumble upon a baseball card of a Georgie Boy Lucas or a Stevie Spielberg. You know, they both played on the Indiana Joneses, so they've got to be worth something, right? You know, a Bob E. Fett. Just a few little things like that. 
You know, the famous Puerto Rican player, Juan Solo. Get all these little nudges and winks because why the hell not? I mean, let's be honest. This game, even though you shoot for an E to 10, it's not for kids. Your six-year-old niece might find E.T. to be creepy. Your son probably doesn't care. It's more for you. Why not? You still play. Let's have some fun then. Pointing and clicking, going around, seeing if Elliot's got any other little things he can do. Oh, look! A toy whip! When finally the pizza guy arrives, you go down, exchange the money, you go and you bring the pizza up when suddenly there's a rustling. Why? That doesn't sound like the usual. That doesn't sound like a coyote. You've heard of the coyote problem. You know about the coyote problem. That's no coyote. You go and check. Rustle of bush. Quick cut scene. Elliot sees something. Runs back inside. Drops the pizza and everything. So now, cut back to the man of the hour. Back to E.T. Now it's more of a Metal Gear type of scenario. Not not solid, we're not going that far. We're talking classic Metal Gear. This is where more of that stealth comes into play because you're trying to avoid that four-legged thing covered in hair that seems to get louder when it gets closer to you. And every now and again, more of those large creatures you saw from earlier, they're coming in and out of this much larger facility. Some have fire coming off of their lips that they have control over. Some have these cyl cylinder-like things of aluminum and they chug them quickly and smash them on their foreheads. Is it a ritual? Are they bored? Is that what they'll do to you if they get a hold of you? Well, hopefully you haven't found that out yet because you haven't been caught. Otherwise, instant bad ending. But you go through, you're scoping out the outside of the house, you're coming up upon things. Oh look, a fork. I don't know what a fork is, but maybe I can use that. What's this toothed wheel that's sharp? That's, that's interesting. This might be able to help me. Start stumbling upon things. A few more little nods here and there. And then Elliot comes back out. Now you have that first co-op-esque moment. Sort of like a quick time event. I, I know, I know, I know there are those times when quick time events are absolutely unnecessary and just piss you off, but this is where the bond comes into play. You learn each other's mannerisms. You speak to each other. You learn things about one another. And that is when the bond happens. I know in the movie the glowy finger has more prominence. It's, it's to show that empathic healing ability. We're not doing Final Fantasy style gameplay. We're not doing this as a first person shooter or anything like that. This would be a quick way of going in between Elliot and E.T. And it would still sound cute to hear E.T. every single time. Maybe switch it up a little bit. So of course, morning comes. And E.T. is hungry. 
What is he hungry for? You don't know. I mean, it's, it's not like he's a dog, it's not like he's a cat, it's certainly not a fish. So, what do you feed him? Go back to point and click, but now the entire house is open, which makes it even more interesting, because now you get to stumble into the little sister's room, stumble into your brother's room, look under his pillow, and find that magazine. Go into the mom's room. Hey, wait, why does she keep a loaded gun? I don't know. Oh, well. Stumble into the medicine cabinet. Hmm. Can he eat toy cars? Let's find out. But then, you find still the bag of Reese's Pieces. You're about to snack on it when suddenly he snatches it up. Now you know what he can eat. And hey, think about it. Instant product placement. It's real simple. It's not forced down their throats. Oh, he ate a bag of Reese's Pieces. There you go. He ate that up pretty quickly. He was starving. Which means he probably needs more. But you're plain as Elliot. Which means you're a kid. Which means you can't just go to your ATM pull out five bucks and get a bag of candy. Then again, it's like what, the early 80s? Probably could have gotten at least three, maybe four on a Sunday. But not only do you have to worry about feeding your new alien friend, you also have to worry about your bratty little sister, who if we remember in the movie, can't shut her goddamn mouth and the older brother, who, even though, yes, in the movie, he ain't no snitch, you don't really know that at this point, do you? You have to hide E.T. from both of them while trying to scrounge up quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies, maybe even a dollar or two if you're lucky, so that you can go and get some candy. But if you've done everything right, and even kept E.T. away from Mom, at the end of the day, you go to sleep after E.T. puts on this wonderful show with your very weak attempt at making a solar system out of tin foil and paper mache and paper clips. It's almost like he's giving you a bedtime story. It's kind of cute. Fade to black. It's now the next day. Elliot actually has to go to school. So what the hell is he going to do about E.T.? Simple. Stuffs him in his closet. Asks him very politely to be good. He has to go on his way. Mom's not there. Sis certainly isn't there. Big bro's got football practice. What's E.T. to do? Hmm. Yeah. That's right, E.T. now gets to inadvertently ransack the house, try to find more items to help himself get home. Right. So you continue your point and click. A little bit here, a little bit there. Oh. What's this band of rubber? Hmm. Maybe this can help me. Oh, look! Millennium Falcon. I've never read that comic before. Hmm. You go along. This is a little easier. You have plenty of time now because E.T.'s the only one in the house. Except there's someone creeping up by the windows. Looks like one of those creatures you tried to avoid early. So you're ducking away while still checking out the house. Time passes. Family comes home. 
you've hidden away back in Elliot's room. But while that's going on, you can alternate between E.T. and Elliot in a split screen kind of thing. This is where the empathic nature of their characters really comes into play. E.T. touches something sharp. Elliot feels it. Elliot drinks some water from the water fountain. E.T. can swallow it. It's kind of cool going back and forth like that until it's time for Elliot to go home. And being the good little boy that he was at school, he gets to go trick-or-treating. Because what video game wouldn't be complete without a holiday level? This one in particular is fun because it was in the movie, so you're not shoehorning anything in. You get to do a little Halloween dress-up game. And with all the actual little snippets that you found pointing and clicking and dodging and bumping and weaving, you don't have to dress E.T. up as a little ghost if you don't want to. Maybe he's Charlie Chaplin. Maybe he's... Maybe he's a certain little green long-eared rice man. Mm. The point of the matter is, this is where you get to have a little bit of fun. Trust me. If done right, you would eat up 15 minutes maybe just doing this. On to the trick or treat. Where of course, get more of that Reese's goodness. And maybe some of their other stuff. Maybe throw in some peanut butter cups. Stuff like that. Each one gives a bonus. Maybe one type of candy keeps a little sis quiet. Maybe the older brother won't beat you up if you hand over that type of candy bar. And while you're trick-or-treating, you're still stumbling upon interesting little items here and there that for some reason E.T. just knows will help him work on his communication device. Now, of course, at some point you have to break free and hide away from your siblings so that you and E.T. can get the job done because he still needs to phone home. But where is he going to do that? bald spot in the park. And how are you going to get there? It's not like you're going to walk all the way. And there aren't that many buses in that area. This is what you do. <laughs> Bike mini game. But this isn't like just anything. It would be similar to Mock Rider whipping and dipping and bobbing and weaving, dodging trees left and right. There's rodents in the area. There's rocks. Some of the hills are a little too deep. Some of them are kind of shallow. And every now and again, you swear you see a flashlight go off. You gotta get from point A to point B. You gotta get there in one piece. You gotta get there in as short an amount of time as possible. You're going, you're going, you're going, you're going. Dip, dip, whip, whip, weave, weave. Till finally, up comes that hill, up comes that hill. Oh my god, what are we gonna do? E.T. makes it all fly. That's your first major money shot of the entire game. Beautifully pixelated, smooth like silk, crisp like lettuce. Go over that moon. You land, bop, bop, bop. And now what? Well, now you have to assemble the item because obviously you had no choice. So you assemble the item, you figure out which pieces fit best. And then you have to turn it on. Maybe a short, quick time event just pushing on the on combination, maybe figure out something along the lines of that. And then you have to find the right spot within the bald patch. Maybe you can't just be dead center. Maybe, for some reason, the signal's better if you move off to the west. Or you go a little southeast on it. We'll give you about five chances to do so. Maybe you get in the first one and it just cuts to the 
scene of them just looking down like, oh, I guess not. Maybe we'll try in the morning, E.T., as you go to sleep and it just beep, 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 picks up. Let's be honest. It'd be more fun if they didn't succeed. And maybe they got signals from other individuals. Maybe at one point you hear a Maybe over the radio you hear you hear some guy complaining about snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? But now mornings come. You realize you've been out all night. Your mother, being an 80s mom, has probably called the cops on you. Because, you know, they do that. Now you have to race back. That's where the second bike scenario goes down. But this one's more in line with, like, Paperboy. It doesn't have to be as necessarily high, uh, fast-paced, high-octane. Thrill ride is the first one. This is more, you need to go as slow and as carefully as possible. Because you're a kid trying to be inconspicuous. Because the last thing you want is get busted by the cops, right? So you're pedaling along, you're going through alleyways and things like that. There's cops looking for you. There's also a white van. Not like the candy white van you were always told about as a kid. Now this, this white van looks kind of official. Why is that? Frankly, you don't want to know. So now you're going. You're trying to get back home. Just as you're coming over that one hill, you notice something. Your house has been quarantined. Not just quarantined, it's in a giant fucking bubble. The NASA guys got there before you did. Yeah. This isn't game over. This is just the one time you get caught that you shouldn't worry. So now they've got E.T. So far, it seems as though they're not going to hurt him. But you don't know that. All you know is they have your friend. And everything they're doing to him, they're doing to you. You feel the pokes, you feel the prods, you feel the warmth of the weird scanners that they use. They don't feel cozy. They don't feel like a campsite fire. No, this feels more like if you decide to stand in front of a microwave oven after eating four Taco Bell tacos from the Midnight Crew. Not, not the lunch crew. We're talking graveyard when they don't care. And you just decide to stand in front of a microwave with your stomach bubbling. That's what you're feeling. That scares you. And you're pointing and you're clicking the whole time, trying to see if you can like swipe a key card from someone. Maybe maybe there's a maybe there's an unguarded door. M maybe if you type in THX 1138 somewhere, things will work out. I mean, you're a kid. You're not Snake Plissken. You're not Spider-Man. You can't just walk up, knock someone out, take their gun and demand the alien. No. You're a kid. You are out of your element beyond belief. This isn't like, oh, I'm a fourth grader in a sixth grade class. No. 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 You're a butterfly in a tornado at this point. These are highly trained, cold, merciless adults for all you know. Did they kill your mom? You don't know. Is your brother alive? You have nothing to go on. What happened to your little sister? You don't know. But you find E.T. He's glowing red. But not like a, not like a warning red. It's that warmth. 
There's hope in his eyes. They got the message. They're on their way back. His family is coming. But he can't do it alone. By this time you found your brother, hopefully. And he's totally on your side about this because... Dude, I have seen some stuff. But if we get this guy out of here, that means these big bads leave us alone? I don't have a problem with that. You know, he's in that mindset. You know, F authority. It's us against them. Let's get the ball rolling. You go, you scoop up your baby sis. You send your mom a quick goodbye. I love you. We'll be back. You take the first man you can get a hold of. You know, the one that was attached to one of those, uh, one of those quarantine tubes from the outside. And this is where maybe a fun little uh, tidbit comes in. We playfully call it shake em. You Take that van and you gun it. And you're doing everything you can to get past every obstacle. The whole time you're trying to shake that tube free because there's at least three G-men on the inside of that quarantine tube trying to hang on and get closer and closer. And as they do, you start pulling peg after peg out of the back. That way when that final peg comes out you hit that sharp corner they go rolling. They're not going to die. They're not going to die. They didn't die in the movie. So why should they die here? But while that's going on, you might hear a chopper up top. You're trying to shoot your tires out. Drop a net on you. Something like that. Make it interesting. Maybe not, maybe not buy you Billy hard, but make it interesting. So you've escaped. You reactivate that little communication device. You're having to assemble it as quickly as possible. Keep the signal going. You start playing keep away. Passing it off between your sister, your brother, and yourself. All those G-men are looking for you. Until you find those bikes. I mean, come on. We have to have it end that way. It's almost mandatory. It's far more iconic than even the first time because now it is the power of belief and faith and hope and love. And it's everything you've trained for. You are ducking and dodging. You're going stealth. You are doing everything you can to get E.T. home. And the music should actually be pretty exciting at this point. I mean... You know, I doubt John Williams plays a lot of keyboard type stuff or chip tunes. But if we could get something going, that would be nice. You know, something along the lines of that. To give the illusion of threat. The choppers are coming. There's bike officers now. And we're talking motorcycles. There's cop cars. The FBI is getting involved. You are racing. You've probably pulled off a few sick tricks at this point because... Why not? Go excite bike if you want to. We don't care. Just get E.T. home. But then, the cutscene. When that one cop pulls that shotgun out, cocks it for the first time, E.T. sees what's about to happen. Cue the music and it's time again. Like you could even make this a bonus level if you do it in record time. Go through and actually direct the kids have them switch off, go through clouds, score extra points. Because the points are going to be necessary for the leaderboards online. They finally land. And depending on how well you did and how much you point and clicked, maybe it's not a scout ship. Maybe it's the whole family. Maybe there's a few extra things here and there. 
fact of the matter is, you got E.T. home. You got him home. And depending on everything you've done to this point, maybe it's just a little rescue pod. Maybe you don't know if he'll actually make it back, but he's got a chance. Maybe he did everything right and the whole family's there. They have a nice big embrace and they wave goodbye and all those big grody looking dudes that you thought were going to be horrible or just, they just wanted to believe the whole time. Maybe that's all they wanted. Yeah, they might have come off a little aggressive, but to have that moment to know we're not alone, that right there, that would mean so much. Maybe it's a scout ship with just one guy, and you have to practically throw E.T. onto the ship, and it flies off, and they're like, where are they going? They're going home. And they're all gruff and angry and they're kicking dirt around because damn it we didn't get a good picture and all of that. But wouldn't it be better if it was that last ending? Be good. Think about some of the unlockables you might come across. Point and click around the house and maybe you stumble upon a movie that's playing in the background. A guy fighting Nazis, or maybe there's this grand galactic fight, or maybe that little Atari sitting on top of the TV, maybe, maybe it's got that classic game of alien falls in hole and collects flowers. I mean, we are the masochistic type, aren't we? We will try to get the top score on the leaderboards. So that's E.T., how it really should have been done. It's a shame it took forever for anyone to actually sit down and really piece this together. But that's what I'm here for, isn't it? <laughs> no, um, honestly, I'm more than certain a lot of people have thought about it, maybe contemplated really trying it themselves, but... Wouldn't it be cool if that had actually happened? In fact, in fact, I'm challenging anyone out there, any knowledge, any know-how, just for fun. You try and get this started. Just try. See where it goes from there. Maybe it becomes a cult hit. Maybe it gets a green light, goes triple A. Think about that. Think about a cool, cell shaded, three dimensional variation. All that 80s nostalgia right there really brought to life. Maybe even get some sound clips from the film. Heck, if we could get Elliot himself to narrate that time when he was a kid and the thing happened about that. But it's just a just a thought. Just a thought for now. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you feel about this idea. Drop a comment. If you liked it, cool. Whether you like it or not, if you want to share this, even better. But I thank you for your time. I'm Ian the Torch Torchetti. The man behind the camera is Mr. Gann. We are agriculture. When it starts to get hot out there, and they come bearing down on you, just remember, get behind the tank. Alright, so here's what we do. Here's how you would make E.T. a game, right? Here's my pitch. You fall down holes, but it's in 3D, and you can have different colored E.T.'s 
Paid DLC. Ten out of ten game of the year.